good, YouTube man? Thank y'all for tuning in to I Am Fresh. And we are back at it again with another video. And to my Fresh fan, man, thank y'all so much for always tuning in with your boy. Fresh fan, man, I've been going crazy. Um, it seems like December Christmas has been coming early because I've been turning it up, trying to bring y'all some fresh new firearms to the platform for y'all to enjoy. So with that being said, I got something special for y'all, Fresh Fam. This one right here, man, I did for us, man. You see this right here? Check that out. You see it? That M&P M2.0. This that big old Smith & Wesson box. You know, this ain't your regular box either, man. This thing looking like a briefcase. So, with that being said, it ain't your regular 2.0, man. So let's go ahead and take this thing to the tabletop, man, and go ahead and break this thing down, because I got something special for y'all. You did. All right, Fresh Fam, so now that we got this thing on the tabletop, man, let's begin with the official unboxing. Um, this is the Smith & Wesson m and 9 M2.0 competitor, man. This is a part of their metal series. Um, you all are familiar with the uh, m and 9 metal. Well, this is the competitor, and this one is supposed to be Smith's answer. To really diving into the competitive series. All right, man. So as you can see, this thing is loaded with goodies, man. It's loaded with goodies. All right. So let's kind of get through this top layer of stuff so that we can get to what we really came here for. All right. So here you got like a baggie of tools. Okay. So what this is, is this is um, your grip tool right here. This allows you to change out the back straps right here. This tucks into the bottom of the pistol here um, into the mag well, and this locks and secures those back straps in place. And this right here is your standard magazine release button right here. So you can change that out for the one that's currently in there. All right, so we'll put that to the side. Here's your optics plates for the um, various optic mounts that you might put on here. So you get a bag full of those, screws included. That's cool, we'll put that to the side. Of course, it's mandatory, it's law, that you get you a nice gun lock. And of course, you gotta have your manual, all right? So anything you need to know about this bad boy for specifications is gonna be in here. Now, we finally arrived, man. Would you look at that? Mm. All right, man, so here she is. Ooh, that's very nice. Very nice, man. All right, so where do we start, man? What does it come with, all right? Outside of the pistol, man, this thing is gonna come with four 17 round magazines, four interchangeable back straps. So you got one that's already on here. Um, I did off camera swap this out because um, I wanted one that was already gonna feel good in hand so that I can get this thing straight out to the range and not have to bring all of this stuff with me, all right? So here's your other three right here. It goes from small, medium, medium, large, all the way to large, all right? Boom. So now that that's out the way, let's go ahead and close this case. Let's get this thing out so we can really talk about the specs and really what this thing has to offer. All right, y'all? All right, Fresh Fam. So now that we have the unboxing out the way, let's kind of get into the specifications of this thing and what's actually new. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get this thing a couple racks just to make sure that the weapon is safe. So as you can see, there is no magazine. And as you can see, nothing up top. So let's go ahead and lock this thing back. All right, so let's dive into the obvious first. I think that's a safe place to start. Um, what's new? As you can see up top, this thing has some really aggressive um, slide cocking serrations right here. As you can see, I got clammy hands and it was really easy for me to go ahead and rack this thing with no problem. Um, you're getting some really long um, slide serrations up front. So I think that's more so for just kind of balancing and weight management than it is for recoil because I mean, I don't see any ports in the barrel. So um, I guess those cutouts are one just to make the gun look cool as well as um, just, you know, some weight management because this is an all metal gun. This gun is made out of aluminum. So yeah, man, it feels really good in the hand, all right? Another thing that you're getting is this nice fiber optic front sight, serrated rear sight on the rear. But as you can see, it allows for you to get a really good sight picture there, really fast pickup. Um, but I think I would like to probably run this thing with a red dot. So as you can see the obvious, it definitely has a cutout. This thing is ready for a red dot. I don't know which red dot I'm gonna put on here yet. So y'all comment down below, would it be a good red dot to run on this thing? This is my first, I guess, competition style um, pistol. You get your traditional rail 
um, railing system at the bottom for attachments. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my uh, Go Gun gas pedal on here. I'm gonna take it off my other MMP and run it on this one since this is like an official competition pistol. Remember I said that that was your standard magazine release button? Well, here's the competition one. As you can see, it sits out and also it's serrated and kind of textured so that it's very um, easy to get a good purchase on there and get a good push without your hand, you know, slipping and sliding off. Um, I really like that a lot. It feels really good and I feel it like just kind of resting on my finger. It kind of just helps me balance off the pistol really nice. I like that. All right, and then we come down to the bottom. Of course, you know, um, m and runs this heavily serrated kind of sandpapered texture, um, grips on there and these back straps are interchangeable so not nothing too new but um you know i like how they kind of mixed it up and broke it up with the metal right here um and then of course you get your competition style flare mag wheel look at that thing man another thing that i noticed too it has ambidextrous um slide releases so i like that and they're kind of bumped out as well too as you can see they stick out real nice and wide on here so i like that that's nice that's real nice I like the way they slanted off that barrel right there. Um, if you are familiar with the Smith & Wesson um, M&P Performance Center five inch, um, it's kind of squared off. This one, they slanted it off to give it that distinction. Um, that looks really good. Reminds me of like a kind of turn tactical vibe, but of course, you know, I'm gonna put some respect on turn tactical. This is more so like a Terrence tactical, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's that Terrence tactical vibe, man. I really like that. A lot of ads to the aesthetics of it. Looks really, really good. I think the overall length of this um, particular firearm is eight and a quarter um, inches. So has a really nice long slide. Um, which allows to just help with some of that recoil when you fire firing that nine mil to keep this thing balanced off. It's an overall weight of 29 ounces. So I guess it's in that competitive space, but I mean, I've held some heavier competition guns. I've held some heavier ones, man. So this one is not all that heavy, but it feels balanced though. It feels really, really, really good. All right, so I wanna bring in my Smith & Wesson, my OG subscribers, man. Y'all know y'all see this one all the time, right? I'm gonna bring in my m and um, This is a four and a quarter inch barrel right here. This is the performance center as well too. So let's make sure that this firearm is safe. So as you can see, there's no magazine in this firearm. And as you can see, nothing in the chamber. The chamber is clear. So this has the ported barrel and it also has the slide cutouts as well too, but they're, they're functional cutouts, one for weight and also letting that port breathe out as well too, which helps with that recoil as you all know. All right. so. Let's test out the trigger on this thing now that we bring in the Ever Smith & Wesson because I'm going to show you why it's probably going to be a need. If this is the factory trigger that came in this one, this trigger is garbage. This trigger is so long that, I mean, it, it's really disappointing that Smith & Wesson is still even using this trigger. All right. So let's go ahead and give it a rack. Safe direction. Slide you down. Safe direction. Let me get up close, y'all. Watch that trigger pull, y'all. Take up, take up, then you get a break. All the way to the rear where the trigger meets that um, trigger pad right there, all the way to the rear. All right, so let's do it again. That trigger's trash, man, yikes. You would think for a competition pistol, man, they would have put a better trigger in here, especially for that price point, man. And it's called a competitor, man. You're supposed to be competing you know, with the market, man. So come on, Smith. Y'all know I'm a big fan. Come on now. So that's that trigger safety. You engage that. Now we're going to engage and take up. So you come to a little wall here. That's a false wall. You go past that. Now you're at the second wall. So quite a bit of take up, man. A, a tremendous amount of take up. Trash. And then you get that break. But let's try that reset. Reset is nice. Yeah, reset is nice. Oh yeah. So reset is nice, but the trigger is still trash. Let me, let me show y'all why, man. All right. So let's come over here to the um, performance center real quick. Of course, you know, this one has the apex trigger in it. So let me show you, all right? Trigger safety, take up, break. I can't believe it's no bottom. Huge difference. Look at that. That's the reset. 
break again. All right. Now look at that. Take up, break. That apex trigger is going to be mandatory in this. That's definitely getting swapped out, and that's going to get swapped out before I even get an optic on it, man. That's 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 a must. So now you can see that they're still running that that same um, junk trigger, man, that they put in these, man. I thought, you know, at least for this model, they would kind of step it up and, you know, put a tuned trigger in here to just be competitive. So I guess it's got some cons already. We're talking about um, uh, capacity. It's a 17 plus 1. Um, you're getting a, a junk trigger on there, but everything outside of that, man, is nasty. Um, the weight of it, the looks of it. Um, I can't speak to the performance just yet. We'll be taking this thing to the range tomorrow, man. So we'll be seeing how this thing actually shoots. But um, knowing Smith & Wesson, all my other Smith & Wessons shoot phenomenal. I expect nothing short other than this one, especially on this all-metal platform, all right? This thing is coated with a tungsten gray Cerakote. The barrel is stainless steel with an armor knife finish. This is a striker fire weapon, as you can see on the rear. The frame is 7075 T6 aluminum. And again, the barrel length is five inches for a total length overall of eight and a quarter inches, all right? So as you can see, Here's my Smith & Wesson Performance Center right here. And this is four and a quarter inch. So let's put that for a side-by-side -side comparison, just so you can see the difference in barrel length. Really not that much at all, all right? Three quarters of an inch difference. Nothing big at all, man. Look at that. Man, that thing look good, don't it? If you all are thinking about getting this thing, um, I definitely think it's a cop. It needs some necessary upgrades. Um, I think at this price point, some things should just be already done. But I mean, even when you get SIGs, man, you want to put your twist on and those things are, you know, being customized too. So trigger, base plate extension. And I think this thing is 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 ready to go. Um, the guide rod in here as well is uh, made out of stainless steel. So I'm going to show you guys just a quick magazine profile. Here's how it looks with that magazine in it. So as you can see, it just pokes out just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. I did put my Floyd's Custom Magazine um, in here that I run in my Performance Center, and it had some issues, man. It had some issues. I don't know if this base plate extension here is just too bulky for this mag wheel right here because I wanted to run this um, at the range, but I can't because look, y'all. It goes in there smooth, no problem, right? But look, you saw how hard that was to pull that out? Yeah, man, I don't like that, man. So it goes in there all right, look. Nah, that's a little crunchy, never mind. Oh yeah, nah, I don't even wanna mess it up, man. I don't even wanna mess it up. So I'm not I'm not actually gonna run that. Um, as you can see, it's just too gritty, too crunchy. I don't know what the issue is, as you can see. It's the same exact magazine. So I think it just has something to do with that, um, this base plate extension right here. I think maybe it's just too bulky and that's where the issue is coming from because as you can see, all of the holes line up perfectly. It's the same exact magazine. I don't know, y'all. I think it's just this is too bulky and maybe it's pressing um, on the mag wheel causing it to have um, a locking issue. So. Yeah, I won't be running that at the range. I'll just be running the standard magazines, but I'll be looking around to see what type of base plate extensions I can get, man. Listen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, man, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below, man, if you're thinking about getting this bad boy. Is it a cop or a drop? And if you're not a part of the Fresh Fam, consider hitting that subscribe button and join the Fresh Fam, man. What you waiting on, man? All right, y'all, so the next time y'all see this bad boy, it's going to be at the range, man. But until the next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.